Hi. Uh, welcome to my latest VR sculpting project. The sculpting was done in Kodan, concept piece was done in Photoshop, rig and so on in Blender, mesh clean up in Instant Mesh, and the textures were done in Substance Painter. So, what you're looking at here is a real-time uh, model in the Blender viewport. It's a uh, asset uh, tailored for this, which is which has been my goal for a while now. I've been trying to get to a point where I'm making these uh, animated real-time uh, creatures and characters and so on uh, that I can use for Unity projects. And uh, this is using an, a single uh, 2048 by 2048 uh, texture. And uh, the model itself is at uh, roughly 5,000 triangles, which is a general sort of poly budget that I set for myself for this project. The animations are driven by a Simple little armature uh, that I made in Blender with a couple of uh, bones for the eyelids and the eye and the, the most complex part is the tongue which has five or six bones I think. And uh, here I am starting out with the sculpt in Quadon VR. You can see the concept piece on the right side there which I made uh, a couple of years back. For those new to my project videos like this, this will be a time-lapse video with some real-time parts here and there, like this part where I'm showing how I'm carving the gum sockets where I'll be placing the teeth later on. This creature is uh, from a passion project, which me and another uh, fella has been working on on and off for oh almost five years now I think the original uh, creature design it was simply this floating eyeball a sentry of sorts uh, flying around looking for the player and when they find them they start throwing fireballs and so on and I wanted to expand a bit on the design so around this eyeball i started designing this uh, sort of eye socket with uh, the protruding uh, cheekbones and also ended up adding this uh, <laughs> top of the gums and the big uh, gross tongue <laughs> so it, it's meant to be this sort of scary sentry that you're you really don't want to see you before uh, you see it. And uh, here you see me blocking out the teeth with the square brush in Quadon. It looks kind of <laughs> dopey at first, but I keep working on them. I keep uh, making them a bit sharper and sort of uh, jutting out at all sorts of angles. As I mentioned, this is for a passion project. If you want to check it out, you can find it on Steam. It's called the uh, Counterspell. With the basic uh, teeth and so on in place, I start working on the different intersections between the, the models, the, or volumes rather. So here I'm adding this sort of uh, lip to the body where it meets the gum. And of course the, well besides the, the, the big eyeball, I suppose, the sort of secondary main piece, the big uh, tongue. Working in uh, VR sculpting is 
really works well for these type of creatures. You get this very organic, uh, almost clay-like feel to them. And here I start adding these little details, the bumps and so on to the tongue that really makes it uh, gross. I want it to look gross. <laughs> that's, the, that's the aim with this. And once most of the model is in place, I get started on this close detail, fine detail. Pass. You can see all the little creases and so on I add at the folds around the eyes. And I make the lip uh, protrude a bit more. Hopefully allowing me to give it a little more character when I'm animating it. But um, yeah, getting pretty close here to finishing the actual sculpt. And once I'm done with that, I move it, move it over into Blender where I do a little clean up and so on on the mesh before exporting it and taking it into Substance Painter here where I start working on the texturing. I wanted the tongue itself to look uh, almost dry like I mean this uh, creature doesn't really have a <laughs> mouth so to speak so it makes sense that the, the tongue would be kind of dry I, I wanted the instead as a contrast the big eyeball to have this really glossy wet look to it and this is what it looks like once I've taken it into blender and uh, <laughs> There's a little surprise sculpted at the back of the eyeball as well. This is for when, when the player manages to take down one of these sentries. It plays this death animation where it spins around the eyeball, <laughs> exposing this big scary skull before it starts sort of kamikaze charging the, the player and exploding on impact. The texturing I've done this far in Substance has been on the high poly model, which is roughly half a million triangles at this point. And this is where I start uh, working on the low poly model. I simply use some decimate modifiers in Blender to bring it down to a manageable level. Again, aiming for around 5,000 triangles. And here you can see how I'm uh, setting up these vertex groups where I'm selecting the inside of the eyeball and decimating that even further because, well, honestly, you're never really gonna see the inside of the eyeball unless I decide to do some sort of animation where on death the eye sort of pops out <laughs> or something, which, I mean, could be fun. But uh, in general, this sort of uh, shapes inside uh, is it concave or convex? I never remember. Anyway, these, uh, ins the inside of a bowl, so to speak, uh, works really well with normal maps and textures in general, so you don't really need a lot of detail uh, in those areas. You should, in general, try to pr use the, the, most of the details to convey the silhouette of the character. And here I'm using the find non-manifold feature in Blender in order to find problem areas of the mesh. When I'm working with these huge volumes that I decimate, I end up with some problems here and there where I get these invalid combinations of vertices that doesn't really form proper faces. So Using Blender's uh, ability to find all these non-manifold areas, I can simply go in and uh, to fix them one at a time. And here's a ultra <laughs> time lapse of me doing the same to the eyeball. And then I simply start unwrapping the model 
it's a bit like uh, I don't know origami or something. Ah, oh, that's not right. Well, you you try to think of the model, how you would be able to uh, cut it open so you can flatten the surface in order for textures to be applied to them. So in general, for one of the teeth or the horns, I place a seam around the base and then a uh, seam along the horn as well. So I can unwrap it into this uh, cylinder shape. Same thing for the eyeball. Uh, I'm using a UV Packer 2, which is this great little plugin for Blender, where you don't really have to pack the UV maps by hand, which traditionally can be a lot of work <laughs> to try and optimize uh, the area that you're utilizing for the texture. And here you see me starting working on the uh, rig, the armature for the model. I'm placing these eyelid uh, bones at the center of the eye so that they rotate uh, around the circumference of the eye. And the tongue here with, uh, is it five or six bones? Yeah, something like that. Uh, overall, this model with the decimated geometry works really well for the animation because I'm doing really simple animations. The tongue, though, needs a little bit of more work because when you're trying to bend, say, a cylinder of some description, you want the uh, loops to be uh, well placed uh, around the base of the, whatever you're trying to deform. So I'm using instant mesh here to take out just the tongue and uh, remesh it. So you see these nice uh, loop cuts around the whole tongue. I then take it back into Blender and uh, figure out which uh, loop cuts corresponds to which points where two uh, bo bones meet each other. And then I take all the areas in between which won't be deformed because they'll just move with the bones and I decimate those to again trying to keep the poly count, triangle count uh, within the budget. I then set up a simple IK solution, inverse kinematics, where I simply need to move the tip of the tongue and I also use a uh, arm copy rotation modifier so that I can rotate the uh, fine adjustments to the tip of the tongue, which also sort of affects the IK. And the IK chain is uh, only up the tongue, of course, so it <laughs> doesn't start moving the whole model. And finally, a little bit of hand packing. I wanted to uh, use a little bit of the space that I could find to make the textures for the iris of the eyeball a little, little bit bigger than the rest, since that will most likely be the focus on, of whoever is looking at this thing. And this is almost always such a fun part uh, when you actually add the normal map to the low poly model and it magically gets all these uh, little bumps and details and so on that's actually no longer there in the low poly model. But, well, that's the magic of <laughs> making these kind of real-time assets. So with the IK in place and uh, well, of course, in between here, I bake the textures from the high poly model to the low poly model. And at this point, I'm making a simple little idle animation where this thing is floating slowly up and down while uh, moving the tongue a bit and adjusting the gum and the lips and uh, having the eyelids uh, contract a little bit as it's looking around to give it a little more character. And here we are. It's always fun, <laughs> fun to use the Blender's built-in uh, HDRI, I think it's called, images that they sort of wrap around the whole scene and provide lighting information for whatever model you have within. So this is what <laughs> the Oracle would look in a hotel bedroom, <laughs> I think. Um, 
maybe not a guest you want. So, yeah, it's great to finally have these VR sculpted assets in this kind of animated real-time state. And from now on, I'll start moving on towards actually putting this in Unity, and I, I can't wait. And uh, thanks so much for watching this little project video. And uh, well, feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below. And until next time. <laughs>